Okay, Nick and Andy, this is it. The big one so early in the season. Monster clash at the Etihad this Sunday. Man City against Arsenal. I'll be there on site for PST. Delighted to be providing analysis, reaction and much more. We'll have you covered over on the website with all different angles of this game. Nick, I'm going to come to you first, mate. What should we expect from this game? Because these have been really tense last season, given mm. sort of just the magnitude of what lies on these games. I mean, Arsenal won at home. They drew 0-0 at City in a bit of a dour game, kept it tight and tense. And I guess with the injuries that Arsenal have had, with the kind of rotation early in the season that City have kind of had to had to keep players fresh and, and injury-free, mm. not quite sure what to expect from this. It could either really explode into life or it can be one of those tight, tense, chess-like tactical battles again. So what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, I'm refusing to build this up in, in the way that I'd like to. I oh, boo, I am hopeful because <laughs> we, we have had so many games where we have said this, like, oh, it's either going to be tight or it's going to be wide open. And they're right. There, there's no in-between. And at this early stage in the season, coming off the weeks that they had in Europe, I do expect them to both go for it. The question is, the question is, because there's a nothing left to lose. There's a nothing left to lose situation with 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 Kevin De Bruyne. Um, you know, whether he goes or not, um, mm -hmm. not being 100. percent We know that. We know we're not going to see Martin Odegaard, and mm -hmm. so that the, these two key components aren't playing. I don't think there is a reason for these teams to to try and get a draw. I think go and go ahead and try and win. Arteta said they are going to go for the win, Andy. Um, but I'm not sure I believe that right now, looking at the <laughs> blueprint that they that Dower game away um, at City. It, whatever you want to say, some Arsenal fans will be like, oh, that was the difference. If we would have won that game, we could win the title and all the rest of it. But I, I just don't think Arsenal can go to City and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them right now with the players that they have missing. Even though it's early in the season, it might be a good time if there's ever a good time to play City. Um, and I think we're going to see exactly the same as we saw from them away at Tottenham, away at Atalanta, uh, and away at City previously, because that's what everyone's been screaming out for, by the way, because Arsenal have gone to City and other big teams over sure. the years, Liverpool, etc., played open, attractive football and got ripped apart on the counter-attack yeah. and left gaps. But this is different, right? They've proved now that they can do this differently. And yeah, I mean, I spoke with Jorginho after the North London derby in the tunnel area, and he was just kind of saying, we're all in this together. We're all going to have to chip in. We know that it's going to be a slightly different game, and we're on this kind of learning curve process together. And over the last couple of years, we have seen Arsenal progress, right, and change their style of play for these big games. So that's what I expect. But should, is that wrong? I, I want to see like a 4-3 win to either team or a 4 or draw. <laughs> right. I just don't think Arteta... Is going to let his side play that kind of game? No, as as many similarities as there are between these two teams because of the familiarity and just the the relationships be between fact. them. Th this is kind of the one area where you take a Kevin De Bruyne out of City, they don't really deviate from what they do. You take Martin Odegaard out of Arsenal, oh, yeah. they kind of have to change the entire thing around and and change the mentality, change the game plan, change everything. And then they kind of find themselves in situations hoping for, oh, we could defend for 90 minutes and we could grab a goal on a set piece the way that they did in the Derby last weekend. And then you can get a win that way. That's against Tottenham. You go against Manchester City who, you know, uh, they have they've been in a situation where they've had two and three and four and five big games one after another and how to handle that and how to get through that period uh, without doing a ton of rotation. Obviously, Rodri's being kind of slowly worked back into the team and so there's levels to go still for City. And so I do think Arsenal are going to come out and, and really try and be defensive. Uh, you know, they, they had six shots in the game against Atalanta and I know they're away in the Champions League and everything, but if we're talking about a team that could win the Premier League, the team that could win the Champions League, this season I know it's game one of many 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 in the competition and everything but but that's just you know that it's, it's a bit of a different look we don't ever really see that kind of uh, reactive play from City whereas Arsenal and to their credit it is good to have multiple different ways to play how many times do we get frustrated with our teams oh, I wish they just had a plan B Arsenal do have that but it significantly limits I think what their potential is against the best teams in the world yeah, because City have a plan B, right, Nick, in certain situations, but you, you still City. They still create a lot. They maybe be slightly more defensive or go man-to-man -man in different areas, but 
they don't, it doesn't change as drastically as we've seen from maybe Arsenal at home against a mid-table team to Arsenal away against a, a big boy like they be facing this weekend. I think with City, I wonder how how pivotal this could be early in the season for them, Nick, to kind of set the tone for this incredible five straight titles they're going for because they have had a bit of a slow start. They still look really good, but as I mentioned before, Guardiola's kind of just had to rotate Rodri, Walker, Stones, Foden in and out of the lineup to keep them fresh and they had big summers with their national teams. And I guess without Kevin De Bruyne, Andy mentioned it there, they're still really, really good, but does he have that X factor with Haaland and, and the build up there? I'm just wondering for City, kind of the the mental mental aspect of this game because they've won so many big games like this. Even if they were to lose this game, like they did early in the season against Arsenal last season, is it like oh, okay, we'll get those points back? It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. I think if they were to lose this game, what you would what they would hear in the media and what what we would see in the media would only you know, fuel them. It, if there is any doubt that they're motivated, it would be them being doubted. Because right now, when when we talk about City, there's, a, I don't want to say it's inevitable. We don't say that. But there's an air of just pure strength with this team. I, I'll tell you what, Kevin De Bruyne is out. He's a wonderful player. Absolutely magnificent. Pep said late in the week that Foden uh, is, is fit to go 90 minutes. He's got Rodri. He walked into free Gundogan. <laughs> Like, uh, you're telling me that that midfield three is really scares you significantly less than one with De Bruyne? And so, like, that, yes, a less for sure, but significantly less what we've seen them do before. Uh, what I have noticed the biggest difference, not to put this back on Arsenal, but Declan Rice is a fantastic player. Declan Rice goes missing. I, I would say he is as important, almost as important to Arsenal as Rodri is to City at this point. Mm -hmm. because what they looked like without him in the second half against Brighton yeah. and what they looked like without him against Spurs, knowing they didn't have Odegaard as well, was just not not very good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. not literally not very yeah. good. Whereas City lost to Bruyne at halftime and just didn't score against Inter Milan. Inter Milan's good. That's a yeah. good football club. And I, I just think City are past the point, even Holland to a certain extent, where you go, oh, they're without that guy. They're going to be in for it this week. Um, now, fortunately, Arsenal have Rice for this match, but I think the, the point you get the point I'm getting at. I'm not worried about City. Hmm. City need five, six injuries for me to be worried. I mean, there's a reason why I shouldn't be worried about City because they have 13 Premier League wins in a row. Just reading off some stats here, uh, dating back to last season, they are unbeaten in their last 27 Premier League games. And they are unbeaten in their last 47 home matches in all competitions, which is a club record. Mm -hmm. So obviously a very daunting task to go to Etihad at the best of times, but particularly now, and that aura of invincibility, I guess, stretches to Haaland right now, doesn't it? Andy Edwards and his battle against Saliba and Gabriel, who did keep him quiet last season, obviously, um, at the Etihad. But that just, again, we can break it down to so many individual battles all over the pitch, yeah. but that does seem in the form that Haaland's in, how fresh he is after a, a relatively quiet summer, seems to be kind of the game-deciding area of the pitch, doesn't it? That's a whole lot of human doing battle right there between yeah. Holland and Saliba, and Gabriel will get, you know, and will insert himself into that situation as well. I mean, yeah, how great is it though that we, you know, that we're in a time now where there is there is a, an equal or a, a close to equal to Manchester City, and uh, that has individuals as well. It's not just a you know a, a bunch of plucky underdogs coming together. It's incredible talent at that level that you know th they might think they they have a chance to slow Holland down, but the form that he's in to start the season what is it nine goals in four Premier League games so far every week in the the PST group chat it's all right well 50 is a realistic target this season what about 60 and every week it just kind of bounces around a little bit and, and and it makes you wonder you know what is this guy capable of and obviously he's in in pretty much the perfect situation that's gonna that's gonna feed him 
dozens of chances over the course of a season on a silver platter. And, and he's just in such a, an incredible goal scoring form right now. The confidence that he's got, we've seen him when the confidence goes a little bit. He doesn't play quite as quickly. He doesn't take chances, you know, uh, fluidly in, in stride and the way that he's taken them at the moment. Uh, even William Saliba, I think, might struggle to contain him just a little bit. Yeah, I, I, if De Bruyne is out, though, it's like they've had a lot of success going direct centrally uh, to Haaland. Somebody else can do that, obviously, but they seem to have a very, pretty special link-up and have hurt Arsenal in that way um, in recent games, in recent years. So, intrigued to see, um, even if De Bruyne doesn't start, if that's another tactic they're going to use to go really direct straight through the middle to Haaland and do something that maybe Arteta wouldn't expect a typical Guardiola City to do because we know Pep loves to have a few tricks up his sleeve uh, for these uh, big battles in these games. Um, on, in terms of score predictions, um, I'm going to go first here. I, I think that City will just have enough. I think it will be Man City 2, Arsenal 1. Um, and purely the only reason for this for me that otherwise I would have picked a draw but I do think that Odegaard being out, we now actually have maybe appreciated and realised just how good he is um, and how he knits everything together for Arsenal. And I think it's a substantial miss. We talk about a lot of the other injuries, absentees they have, but he knits everything together and just the demanding nature of him, the way he's always turning to go forward, linking up with Saka, getting the ball from Ben White um, on that kind of inside right channel and just dictating the tempo of the game. I think that's... That fluidity has really been missing from Arsenal over the last few games since uh -huh. he's been out. And um, I can't really see them getting a control and tempo of the game. I expect City to score early, probably. Arsenal will get a lot of chances on the counter-attack, I think, just the way they're set up. But I think City will just have enough. Nick, your prediction, mate? Look, I think this is the game uh, or one of the games where Arsenal gets bit by not addressing their centre-forward position. And it's because with Odegaard out, which we saw at midweek, um, you don't get the ability to play Havertz up top. And I don't think they have that ability. Yeah. You're going to have to use Rice as an eight. Um, mm -hmm. We saw, I think, a little bit of a tipped hand with Jorginho playing 30 minutes to uh, Thomas's 60 at midweek. So I have a feeling we'll still see Havertz again in the midfield, which means maybe Gabby Jesus up top. I, mm -hmm. I just, maybe Raheem Sterling rescues them with a little bit of direct play coming from the wide areas against his old mates. That would Maybe, be but it, it, it won't be rescuing a win is the point. And so I'm actually going to go with, uh, especially at City, coming off a nil-nil draw. I'm going to go with two-nil Man City. Andy? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we don't have a picks graphic on here because the screenshot potentially, you know, come Sunday afternoon <laughs> could, could make yeah. us look bad. I'm, I'm going to go City as well. I'll go two-nil as well. I think we're going to... I think we might see something really special from City this season. We're already seeing it from Holland. Uh, you know, everything that's going on around the club, uh, Pep Guardiola is a master motivator. Uh, above all else, he does a lot of things pretty well. Uh, but but motivating and getting a group together on the same page, a siege mentality from the best team in the world, the most expensive team in the world, the most talented team in the world over the course of eight or nine months could be something incredible to watch. And it kind of feels, I know we're early, we're early, but it feels like they are at that level already. And who knows what's going to happen in the short and medium and long-term future of Manchester City. But this season, it feels like uh, it could be something special for them. So again, I'll go two nil to City, and and I don't think it'll be particularly competitive. It'll be close, but I don't think re really truly competitive. Joe, I I just want to you know add one other thing, which is to me what this City team is is dropping peaks Latan onto Pep's best Barcelona team, and you know and that's that's unfair. They had forwards, obviously they have Lino Messi, like fantastic players, but this alien life form who isn't just a big fast dude, he's a big fast dude with a brilliant mind. We've seen that on some of his finishes. Um, Andy's right. If they want to, and we think they have the mentality to, anything is possible for this city team. Yeah. It's very, very true. And I think the number of attacking midfield players that they have to choose from right now underneath Haaland is quite absurd. So quite a scary prospect for anybody coming up against them. Let's see how Arsenal do when they come up against Man City at the Etihad this Sunday. I'll be there for PST. We'll have all the information on the site, how to watch, team news, live analysis, reactions, videos. We'll have you covered. 
Massive game early in the Premier League season between the top two from the last two seasons, the title favourites once again this season. Um, cannot wait for this one, Nick and Andy. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we'll speak to you all very soon indeed. Cheers, guys. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host of NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And if you want even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock.